What is going on, YouTube gang? So, welcome back to episode four of Operation 220. Today, we're hitting top shelf. So, a lot of people don't know what that is. I didn't know what it was till recently. So, the primary muscle groups we're hitting today is upper chest, shoulders, rear delts, traps. But first, we're gonna max out on bench. I've been feeling myself get stronger, so I'm gonna attempt to hit 340. Um, that's about it. We're gonna hop into an edit and uh, enjoy this episode. Today I walked into the gym feeling pretty confident about putting up 340. Um, that clearly didn't happen. I'm not gonna cap. I'm pretty <laughs> hot right now, like for real. Um, it's because I'm so much bigger. I'm bigger than I've ever been. So it's kind of a mental game of like, why am I weaker than I've been in the past? Literally a year ago um, at a much leaner body weight. So I'm gonna just get that out of my head. It happened, can't do about it. I'm gonna murder this workout I need to know everything who in the what in the where I need everything trust me I hear what you're saying but I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious George I hop in the Porsche with five and a horse I'm ready for war I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost I need to know everything now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk so I'm letting them talk Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body, another one body, that's just how it go I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes Stay in your lane, not to stay on the go I can to play with the pros and act like a rookie so they overlook me Then I double up again, none of their nose, none of them cold They just got lucky but never adapted, so I'm to the one if it's coming to blows My enemies cutting it close, I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke, I'm ready for smoke I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for ghosts to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. What is good, YouTube? So, Wednesday evening, and this is it Wednesday already? That's insane. Um, yeah, this week I just began a new training program, a new training split. And um, this one's just a little bit more special than usual because not only did I just start it, but I wrote it myself too. So this was something that my coach Alex and I spoke about a couple months back at this point. With you know me being a coach myself, with me being very in tune with specific movements that I feel a lot and specific movements that I don't feel a lot or don't feel like they're hitting the targeted muscle, um, I felt like it would be very beneficial for me to write my own plan. He just was like, man, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're not throwing up pussy numbers, pussy reps, give them pussy effort. And I was just like, I mean, like I acknowledged it, but it's just like, dude, like, he, he knows, like I told him, bro, you ain't even gotta, you ain't even gotta worry, you ain't even gotta say nothing about that, bro. Like, I refuse to train like anything less than an animal when I'm in the gym. Like, that's just the mentality that I've always had and will always have uh, surrounding training. But I'ma hop into it real quick. I'ma give a brief description of why I chose the movements I chose and why I chose the right ranges that I chose. So, let's start with day one. Uh, I will throw the little, the little screenshot on the screen. Like I would love to have this in like some pretty little format in an Excel spreadsheet or something with some color codes, but nah, I just got it in my notes um, pinned to the top. So we're gonna start with my day one, chest and back. Chest and back is something that I started doing this most recent prep and it was a combination that I didn't know I needed. Um, so chest and back is something that I don't ever, like I just don't see myself enjoying a split now without it. Like having a titty pump and a lap pump is something serious. Try it if you haven't. 
Um, but yeah, so we're starting off with four sets of 10 on bench. Four sets of 10, one set of failure. So the significance behind that, and I have that for a lot of movements in this training program, specifically compound movements for the most part, or movements that I am viewing or utilizing as my big mover or my main mover. Um, but I wanna get four solid sets of 10, increasing weight each set. And then after that, I wanna drop that weight for that, that fifth set of failure um, to maybe, you know, around like 50-ish percent of my top set and just bust that out. That is the way that I am focusing on and working with progressive overload for this training split. So it's like, we can use bench press for an example. Say I get 225 for 10 reps for my set of failure. And then next week it's like, okay, you know what time it is, it's 11 reps. And then next week is, you know what time it is, it's 12 reps and it just keeps going. It's a very solid way of tracking, okay, am I getting stronger? Am I progressing? So I programmed that in for um, my Smith machine row, for my overhead press, for my bench press. A lot of things, I just feel like that is a very solid way and I like it. I've, I've done two of the workouts off of this plan so far and I like it. So this first back day, day one is thickness or rowing focus. So I have two back days. So with this first back day, it's like, okay, I wanna work on thickening up my back. So I have a lot of rowing movements. You have Smith machine row, high row machine, um, T-bar row, uh, close grip lat pull down. There's really on, only one pulling down movement. And it's like the close grip lat pull down is the bread and butter. Like that is what, that is gonna be in every back day that I have because I really fell in love with that movement this off season specifically. I feel the lat engagement so much. And it's like, I can just, just let my, like I can literally feel it right now. Like just let, let the, let the, let the lats come all the way up. And then like, I wait until I can feel my, I guess it, my anterior delt touching my ear. And that's when I, you know, I'm gonna ring it down. And elbow drive, elbow drive, elbow drive is what I'm focusing on. So just digging my elbows as far back as I can. So, Tuesday, day two, arms. Not everybody wants to say that shoulders aren't a part of your arms. And I'm not fucking with it, straight up. I even sent it to Alex, and I have, you guys will see on the screen, I have it programmed in as arms. Not arms and shoulders. How is this not a part of my arm? I don't know. I do arms, arms and shoulders together. Bicep, tricep, shoulder. That is what I do together. I really love how I formatted this arm day. I have two arm days. I literally, they're, they're just the same thing because I love this so much. I feel like this is gonna be so beneficial for me. Keep in mind, I'm in the first week. There might be minor tweaks um, as I go on with this, but so far the first two workouts I love. So how this is kind of formatted out for at least the first three kind of circuits, if you want to describe it like that, is I have a shoulder movement by itself and then I have a bicep and tricep movement superset. So we start off with a Smith machine shoulder press. I love, have fallen in love with the Smith machine, any type of pressing movement. So not, not flat bench, but when I'm doing variations of incline that can be all types of angles, I love it. You just, it, it keeps the stabilization there. All you gotta focus on is pushing and you are really able to, I feel like, hone in and key in on the muscle that you're trying to work because the stabilization aspect is just handled for you. Um, but yeah, this arm day is silly. So one thing I really wanna emphasize with this arm day is my bicep movements, there are no actual barbell working movements. Everything is singular. So one thing that I have noticed, and this has been throughout the entirety of my training career, is my left bicep tends to take over every time no matter what and it's weird because i'm actually right-handed so it's not the dominant hand or the dominant arm that's doing it but um i've just come to realize that i need to do singular movements so i have single arm alternating curl i have single arm cable curl i have um alternating dumbbell curls it's a much better way to go about it for me because I just end up with a fat ass pump on the left arm and I'm just like a, eh, a little mediocre pump on the right arm I don't enjoy it um, and my arm my left arm has actually gotten bigger over time this actually is the bigger of the two arms 
Um, next is my leg day. Leg day is nasty, foul, short, very short, very simple, but sweet. And that motherfucker, I mean, I, I don't even have to do this yet. It's close enough to my last leg workout that it's just like, all right, check me out. So we got three sets of 30 leg extension, four sets of 10, one set of failure, barbell squat. Just think about that now. Just think about that. Uh, lying hamstring curl, three sets of 20. Leg press, two sets of 20. Two sets of 10, one set of failure. That leg press is a motherfucker and I've fallen in love with it. Um, dumbbell RDL, four sets of 15. Goblet squat, four sets of 10. So as you guys see, that's not excessively long. I'm not gonna be in the gym for, you know, hour and 45 two hours doing that workout it is very simple and to the point that squat and that leg press is a bitch though i'm telling you right now so the significance of the three sets of 30 on leg extension because i know that sounds crazy is i want to really really pre-fatigue my quads before i get under that squat rack as simple as that because your boy like your boy is a physique competitor my legs are not judged but i'm gonna tell you right now i you got me absolutely fucked up if you think i'm walking around with toothpick legs i was talking to my girl mariah about this the other day it's like i absolutely hate my legs it's not fun i don't enjoy it but it's like it is a very very necessary evil for the most part when people don't enjoy something they don't give maximum effort to it with me i make it a point a very strong point to give exceptional effort in my leg days because it's just like you know like you got me fucked up if you think I'm gonna be walking around like Popeye's upper body but uh toothpick legs like I'm not doing it um and plus like it just kind of it just it just accentuates that x frame um that you know we talk about in men's physique it is a very large component of your physique even if we are not judged on stage by our legs it will set you apart if you have a nice set of wheels on you so friday day four is another chest and back day but with an emphasis on width with building the back up so the structure of how the chest movements go is a little different too so bench press Three sets of 15, as many reps as possible. So I'm doing that later on in the week. Once I'm, I feel like I am recovered. That is something that I just, I really fell in love with. Really fell in love with during this first cycle was just like, okay, murder my chest early in the week. Let it recover, let it rest to the point it's not sore. At the end of the week, don't get a whole bunch of volume in, but see how many times I can throw up 315 and then do a couple movements after that. So that's exactly how I made this training program. So three sets of 15, as many reps as possible. Dumbbell bench press, four sets of 10. Seated cable flies, three sets of failure, and then that's it. Not a whole bunch of volume on chest, but enough to stimulate the muscle and grow it. And also see where I'm at and where I'm building over time. Every week I'm saying, okay, am I getting stronger? Am I progressing? If I'm getting stronger, I'm probably building muscle. So everything from there on, which is four or five, about six movements is back oriented. We are still prioritizing my back and shoulders over this off season. Like I have made very, very notable progress in my back and shoulders, um, but they still need to come up and we need to maintain the muscle that we've built. So the, that emphasis on back is just gonna stay there. There's, you get a lot of shoulder movement. You get you get a lot of shoulder work in with obviously hitting shoulders um, as an actual targeted muscle, but with you know rowing movements, with pressing movements, you're getting shoulder activation. So it's just slightly less volume with specifically hitting my shoulders, but it's still there. Trust me, it's still there, and the intensity is through the roof. Um, all right, so, and with this other back day, we are just keying in on elbow drive, just trying to really engage the entire lat muscle. Um, and then you got the day five, and then it's just arms repeated again. Pretty simple. I want to really bring out my arms, you know. Uh, like I said, made, we've made kind of leaps and bounds with my back and shoulder development. Chest has gotten much bigger too, but one place where I feel like I lack is my biceps. I won't say they're puny. I won't say that at all, but like, they my arms just overall i feel like could use a little more 
attention, a little more care, you know? <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And I do want to say that I have two rest days. I am going to kind of alternate them between Wednesday or Thursday and Sunday. Sunday, I always want to have off just because it doesn't make sense for me to be lifting. The gyms close early, don't open early. I have work on Sunday. It's just very easy to make that one of my rest days. And it took me a while, um, probably until 2021, to really realize that I don't need to be in the gym six days a week. I really don't. It's overkill with, especially with the intensity that I train with. Like, it really is. Because I just don't feel like I can recover from that, which at the end of the day is not beneficial if I'm in the gym just to be in the gym. As much as I love the gym, it's like, I go in there with a purpose and I go in there to work. <sighs> but yeah, guys, um, I am actually counting down the days to hop on this next cycle. So um, just got my labs back and kind of have the green light to go ahead and start this next cycle. This is going to be the second and last cycle before my prep, second ever cycle. Um, but yeah, we are going to be running the same amount of testosterone and we're actually introducing Anovar at a very low dose just to allow testosterone to be more available by the body and to give me that slight edge in the gym with my training sessions, um, allowing me to push harder, allowing me to be stronger, which in turn will build more muscle. And this, this cycle is a little different from last. First one we did 12 weeks, now we're doing eight weeks. We want to prioritize my health and there's no need to be on for 12 weeks when I am going to be off for a slight period of time and then be on a four month long prep. But guys, it's, it is, we are growing. It is, this, this is the time I was walking out to my car today, um, going to get something that I needed and just thinking in my head, like prep is literally around the corner and I'm coming in fucking dialed. I refuse to be anything less. Um, so during those times where I just, you know, don't want to, give that effort that I know is necessary and be as locked in as I know I need to be in terms of diet, training, recovery. It's just like, dude, prep's around the corner and you've been talking a lot of shit about winning this show, about being an elite bodybuilder. It's like, back it up, back it the fuck up, dude. I'm ready for this next phase, guys. I'm really ready for prep too. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of an inside look of what the next um, really four months, the remainder of this off season is gonna look like for me training wise. We're gonna stick with this, this plan. I stuck with my last training program for five months. And I think that's where a lot of the benefit comes in is sticking with a training plan for a prolonged period of time. And five months might not even be long enough. You know, I'm not opposed at all to sticking with the training plan for six, eight months a year if that is where progression is still coming from and period is and period and periodization periodization that's a difficult word for me to say periodization that, that's it as long as that is still allowing me to progress and i'm still progressing with the rep ranges and the specific movements that are programmed so be it so be it i don't get bored in the gym it's like it's intensity it is deliberate action to reach a specific goal which is the most elite physique that I can possibly build. That's always the goal, to be the most elite competitor that I can possibly be. But that's a little inside look, guys. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys got any questions. Go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, just know we're working over here. We're building, we're building something special for sure.